Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? This is Amanda. I'm so pleased to be back with you. Genuine smile on my face to see you all. Um, thank you for being so patient. And you're probably going to have to be patient for another week or another couple of weeks because I'm still not back to my normal schedule of two videos a week on YouTube and more regular daily updates or every other day on my other social media. Um, I've been away from home for two weeks. I've just popped back today to do this video for you because there are so many subjects that are bubbling up that I'd like to talk about. So I think we're going to do a spiritual news. I do this from time, time to time and we cover off five or six subjects that are in the news. I'll pull some cards. I'll bring through my own intuition. I'm going to bring through some guides, particularly Carly is very present here. And I'll tell you why in a moment. Also the energy of Jesus and his disciples. Um, but before any of that, yeah, thank you for your patience. Um, the, the work in the house is going really well. We've had a beautiful wooden floor put down downstairs. It looks absolutely lovely. I'm just very blessed and humble. And uh, I sort of want to give a shout out to Joseph at this point, the carpenter and Jesus, the carpenter who uh, worked with wood. And I don't know, there's just something about natural wood in your home and underfoot, which just feels so healing. It's just gorgeous. It's the first time I've seen it today. Um, so, yes, I'm away for another week. I have been using this as an opportunity to reset and I am not dieting because I don't believe in the word diet. I'm actually trying to make some very positive lifestyle changes. I've been exercising every day, um, eating more healthily, trying to slow down and take Archangel Michael's guidance in the June update that I did, which was about needing to chill. We all need to chill out a little bit more. Um, but yes, also the weight is starting to budge, which is great. I couldn't get into this dress two weeks ago. I can today. I'm very proud of myself. Uh, so it's all good. Before we get to the main subjects of this video, we're going to be looking at the startup of CERN again. Um, and that's going to be quite difficult because I don't know a lot about it, but I'm being asked to pull some cards on it. So I'm going to do that. Um, I'd like to have a look at Japan and they have uh, a heat, well, they have extraordinarily high temperatures at the moment in Japan um, and unusual weather in Japan. They're suffering a, a big, big heat wave. I know it's happening in other parts of the world as well, but I haven't looked at Japan for a while, so I want to look at Japan. Um, I, I probably am going to bring Carly in and get a little bit uh, one of the things I want to talk about is two types of archetype that we're holding within us. One is the warrior, exemplified by somebody like Kali, the goddess Kali, Archangel Michael as well. And she's wanting me to talk about some quite contentious subjects in the news and bring them up for discussion. Um, one of which is Jill Biden and Sesame Street. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you will by the end of this video. I might also pull some cards on The Simpsons. Um, the infiltration of politics into um, uh, children's TV. Uh, maybe it has always been thus, but it's very much in our face at the moment. Um, and I don't know, whatever else. It's 4th of July tomorrow, isn't it? So maybe some cards for USA as well. Before any of that, though, I want to just say something um, about menopause. Okay, now I'm going to do a much longer video on this. Um, I'll do a special on it. And indeed, it might be a series of videos that I make. Um, but I would just like to put my toe into the water today to introduce the subject, because I know there's a lot of women of my age that watch me. I also know there are women who are older than me that have gone through it. I also know there are a lot of women who haven't got to it yet and maybe might appreciate some of the guidance I feel I can bring through because um, I wish I'd known a little bit more maybe a decade ago to prepare myself. Um, so what the work I'm going to be bringing through on menopause is going to be quite sensitive because I'm going to be doing it or I'm going to be standing up for women that wish to do it in a different way. I feel as though this stage of life, 
which is a natural stage of life that all women go through if they're lucky enough to get old enough. And yes, let me repeat that, if they're lucky enough to get old enough to go through this and then out, of the, out the other side, although it can happen, of course, much earlier. I had a friend who went through it in her 30s. Um, I feel as though there is a relentless... Um, I'm just going to say it for what I feel it is, propaganda machine that is trying to turn a natural phase of a woman's life into a medical problem and over-medicate it. Now, if you wish to medicate for the rest of your life uh, because of your changing hormones, that is not something I'm going to judge, ever. I believe in freedom of choice. I will always stand up for freedom of choice in all of its different flavours. But for me, with menopause, as an example, I'm not going to be going down the HRT route. And I don't want to be shot down in flames for that because I know there are other women that either can't take it or have chosen that they don't feel it's the right thing for them for different reasons. I'm not going to be preaching at anybody, but I am going to be talking about, about it. And I do feel as though we know that big pharma, pharmaceutical com companies, make huge amounts of money on many things okay many things and I'm not anti-pharmaceuticals I um, have taken them in the past for various things and would again but I never wish to become reliant unless I need unless it was completely you know I had to and there was just no other way out as I say this is where, why it's sensitive because some women will get very triggered because they think they will think I'm judging them for a decision they've made. I'm not. I'm just wanting to express another voice on the subject. And I'll be doing that in a different video. Because my gut feel all the way through the last year and a half, and I've been going through menopause for a few years now anyway, has been just this growing sense of discomfort with what I'm seeing out there, where we've gone from zero to a hundred. We've gone from a place where women never talked about it, or it was never talked about, or it was just laughed at, um, and hidden away, you know. And don't forget, at the start of the century, a lot of women wouldn't even have reached the sort of age that menopause hit. Uh, so we've gone from that to now everyone's talking about it, but it's almost just like there's only a one-stop shop answer. The number of people that have rammed HRT down my throat as the answer, you'll be all right, just go on that. And I just got this growing sense that for me, that wasn't the answer. So I'm exploring different avenues and I will share when I'm a little bit further down the path, what I am finding and experiencing. And for those women that are still with me, who are resonant with what I'm saying, even though it's an article in mainstream media, but again, I don't judge all of mainstream media. There are still nuggets of gold in it, even though this is a pretty appalling paper, it has to be said, in today's. Anyway, I'm going to put the link below. It's in today's Sunday Mail. It's an article by a doctor called Dr. Ellie Cannon, who has raised alarm over women taking menopause drugs that they don't need. And she has literally found herself in the middle of a great big mire of judgment and controversy and calling out. I wouldn't be surprised, as mad as this sounds, we, we know the way that the media is going, that the voice that I wish to have on this and the wish that somebody like Dr. Ellie Cannon has on this particular subject, I think we might find that there's going to be censorship further down the line. And you can mock me for that and say, oh, don't be so ridiculous. But I think it's the way we're going. So anyway, I'm going to be speaking up for that. If you're interested, have a look at her article because it's very good. She is a doctor. She knows what she's talking about. And she's just, yeah, just look at it if it interests you. Right. Let's get to the other stuff. Um, where should we start? Let's start with CERN because... Uh, it starts up again on the 5th of July, which is in two days time. Um, it's been, it, it, it was obviously operational and it then went into a period of maintenance, I believe. And then of course, COVID came in. So I'm looking down because I just want to do the numerology of the 5th of July. Um, but it's coming back online as it were on the 5th. Um, so this is the 
let me just grab a little bit of Google so we can talk a little bit more knowledgeably about it, although probably you'll know more than I do, but I'm going to see what um, the guides want me, want me to bring through. So CERN's purpose, what are they trying to do? Um, ultimately, in a nutshell, they wish to uncover what the universe is made of and how it works. Now, as I was driving here today, um, you know, I was just sort of chatting with Metatron in my head and I knew he wanted me to talk about CERN. And do you know what I heard him say? And this is classic Metatron, okay? Classic. This needs to be made into a... Uh, I might have to have to do it into a picture post because people need to hear this. I said, okay, what do I want? What should we say about CERN then? And he basically said, humanity would be would would be much wi would be much wiser to spend the millions or billions of pounds that they are spending on trying to find the meaning of the universe and how we're made and all the rest of it. Be much better to actually just invest in a huge mirror. So we could all take a good, hard look at ourselves. And I just thought, spot on, Metatron, spot on, back of the net for that one. Because it's the truth. It's like we're on the search to go out there. And of course, yes, it's important to discover why we are the way we are and how the universe is made. But what about looking at ourselves? You know, it's like, look at the middle. Again, it's looking in the mirror. So that was the first thing he said. Let's just have a look at the numerology. Um, so it's 5th of July. So it's just after, we're sort of after, what's the next moon phase? Full moon in Capricorn on the 13th. Okay. Um, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. It's a nine. Okay, so it's going to start up with quite a thud. Let me just uh, check the numbers again. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. One and eight make nine. Yeah, nine. Nine is Mars energy. Um, they're really going to fire this up. They're going to fire this up uh, big time. So what the hell does that mean? Let's pull some cards on this and see what Spirit wishes to say. I'm going to I'm going to use a couple of different decks and let's just see what spirit wishes to say the starting up of the CERN um what is it actually called CERN is the European Organization for Nuclear Research Hadron Collider. That's what the word I was looking for. Hadron Collider. Straight away, I'm getting a little bit of a niggle there in my head. So people that are sensitive to energies, um, drink lots of water, I'm hearing, because it's, it can set off um, physical, physiological reactions in the body of sensitive people. Of course it can. We know that, you know, anything like earthquakes, anything geophysical uh, affects the body for those of us that are empaths and sensitive. So if you're like me, you're going to have to um, tread carefully, particularly when it, it feels as though it's a bit like a, it's not the same as switching on a car engine, but that's the analogy that I'm being given. and I've got the pain here again. It's like there's more energy that goes into switching a car on or there's more energy goes it goes into flicking a switch on as opposed to actually it humming the whole time, it being left on the whole time. So there's something about when it actually gets switched on. Um, those of us that are sensitive are going to feel it and I'm really feeling it across the head and I'm being drawn to drinking water. Remember that when you drink your water to uh, bless it and to bring in the energy of harmony, harmonization. Um, and I'm now being shown by Metatron that what man is doing, and I'm using man as a you know, general term, is we are trying to get away from ourselves at light year speed, okay? So it's anything other than looking in the mirror, anything other than looking at our judgment, our separation, our division, our arrogance, our ego, uh, etc. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get away from that as fast as we possibly can. And so the starting up of this 
um, Collider again seems to reflect that and it's like we will go as fast as we can to get out there and to look out there rather than look in here. So that's just a sad truth really but um, anyway let's pull some cards now. So starting up of CERN, a line, okay we've got the energy of a line. Um, this is guidance for what we need to do okay as empaths. Um, we need to, it says, enjoy, slow down, strengthen, open and sensitize. And it says, align to the sacred fool of the wand. OK, and it shows the back chakra as well. Um, funnily enough, I had another strong pull to sit down and do a video which was just on cleansing the chakras today. Um, probably haven't got time to do that, but do make sure that your chakra system is as tip-top condition as you can make it. All of us ultimately are sort of rolling around a little bit at the moment. Vibrationally, it's quite a difficult place to be. But again, I think part of my reset that I'm doing at the moment, okay, it might have been triggered by this particular stage of my life and the need to do it. But actually now I'm very grateful that I have the opportunity because I just keep getting the message that we all whatever sex you are, whatever age you are, wherever you are in your life, we all need to be aligning and getting ourselves spiritually, physically, mentally and emotionally cleaner for the days and the months to come. And I do think that the third quarter of 2022, uh, going into next year, 2023, um, I'm not wishing to throw negative thoughts around, but I just feel as though we need to be prepared. And what I mean by that is to be as strong as we possibly can be, okay? To be as strong as we possibly can be. So this is what this is, okay? Um, it's to um, do whatever you need to do to align. Um, okay, so that one came up with in relation to CERN. Um, and then we've also, you see, it's giving guidance really and more in terms of what we do now it's starting up again. Uh, that's more the, the angle that spirit wants to get at here. Because on the bottom of this deck, we've got the energy of pink. And it says, Pres being in the present moment, staying open hearted, embracing our feelings and welcoming. Um, you see... I don't want to get into doomsday type scenarios here, but I will say, because it needs to be said, that as an example, Stephen Hawking, uh, when he was alive, I know he was um, very cautious, to say the least, about what the scientists were doing with CERN and the potential problems and issues that it could bring to our world, almost along the lines of meddling in what we don't really understand. Um, what I'm feeling now, I'm not sure whether this is coming from Stephen or not, because I'm not used to his energy. I've not tried to channel him, but I'm just feeling another energy come in, is that I'm feeling as though mankind isn't necessarily ready to receive the answers that it's seeking. Um, it's as though we're still at primary school level as a species. The human race is still at primary school level. And it's as though we're we're trying to ascend to, you know, university and graduate um, without the wherewithal and knowledge and wisdom to be able to do something with what we gain. Um, I'm feeling now there's an energy of the importance of light workers such as us when CERN gets turned back on. And there is going to be a lot of stuff on the internet about, oh my God, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. Don't you realise this? Stephen Hawking himself warned about, you know, potential problems, putting it, putting it mildly. Um, as light workers, our job is to stay in the heart. And yes, I've said it before. And yes, I'll say it again. To stay in the present moment, to align, to strengthen whatever... Um, ramification happens and remember that first switch is the most potent mo moment of movement it's like a jolt it brings a jolt wouldn't be surprised if there's not some sort of 
geophysical issue quite soon afterwards in terms of quake or um, volcan volcanic activity, something like that. It's going to jolt the earth. So if the earth is being jolted as light workers, what we have to do is we have to prepare, prepare, we have to be ready for it, we have to stay in our hearts and we have to stay calm. Okay, we have to stay calm. Very, very clear message that this is what we have to do. The other thing I'm feeling is coming through, as I said, I can't quite identify this source. It could be Stephen, I'm not quite sure. Um, and it, it's not as easy as just, we'll tell ask him to say his name. It doesn't quite work like that with spirit. I need more proof than that before I will say I'm definitely channeling Stephen Hawking. But what I am feeling here is whatever this energy is, it does feel like it could be him. It, it's the energy, because he was all about science, wasn't he? Of course he was. He was all about science. But I'm bringing in the energy here of the heart as well and the importance of combining the mind and the heart. And the, and the thing is that some of the scientists that are working at CERN are not coming from the heart space. Uh, they're just coming purely from the heart, from the mind. So what we need to be doing is encouraging those scientists that are within CERN and the will be scientists within CERN that are light workers that are placed there for the moments that are needed, who are going to be staying in their heart as well. Um, so ultimately, it doesn't do any good to anybody, Mother Earth or anybody, to be bringing in negative energy around CERN and talking about it in a very negative language. Um, I know that's triggering to some people, but it's what I'm hearing, because what that does is it helps manifest worst case scenarios. Whereas if we can start to um, visualize and imagine some of the scientists, for example, that are working on these projects, um, and with this technology that they don't even quite really truly understand. They think they do, but they don't. Um, try to see them working from the highest possible frequency that is available to them. And also guides coming in to help them. Um, it's, as, it's as though they, they need stewardship. They need mentorship, but they don't even realise it. So the combination of heart and mind combined... Um, is is really important and to imagine that they're working in that light and you know I don't the only one that I know that's even linked to it and I don't think he works there anymore is um, what's he called Brian Cox <laughs> and that's because he's on TV um, and I actually really like Brian Cox I really in fact so much so I'm actually going to go and see him when he um, he's going on a tour he's coming to my local town um, sometime in October. But I know he would probably poo-poo this video. He wouldn't agree with probably anything that I'm saying. Um, he's not into, I don't think he's particularly even into God, is he? I think he's an atheist. But the point is that if I can imagine somebody like Brian Cox, who I actually do think has got a lot of enlightenment within him, him, because he's playing the role he's meant to play in this lifetime. But if I can imagine him involved in this project because he's the only person I know but working to the highest possible frequency with the best of intentions for the benefit of humanity with the hands and the heart and the the mindset that's then able to do something with what they find because otherwise I'm just feeling as though they find things or they get feedback and it's like well what do we do with that and wisdom needs to much deeper spiritual wisdom needs to come in here um there's a guide that's around this um there's a guide that's around this whole process of CERN I'm just going to pull an ascended master card I'm not sure if this is going to work or not but let's just see who we get I'm tempted to say Ashtar but I'm not sure if that's just because it's it's just obvious <laughs> Sorry, Ashtar. <laughs> I do think Ashtar's around it, but there's Mother Earth, of course, is around it. Mother Earth. Okay, Mother Earth, Ashtar. Okay, I still think there's another one. Mother Earth, Ashtar. Well, that came upside down. I don't think that's correct. Well, no, no. Don't ever say that when you get a card. Don't ever put it back in the deck. Hilarion came out upside down. What was I just saying about it's not heart centered? 
what's he wearing? A great big green emerald on his heart. Hilarion is wanting to bring in divine healing. But I'm feeling as though he he comes in and he sweeps the path afterwards. So again, um, I think it would be useful if on the 5th of July, when they switch it on, whatever time that is, and it's probably easily found, um, we could maybe just meditate for one minute, two minutes, 10 minutes. We don't have to come together. I'm not gonna be able to organize that. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here in a different place at the moment. Um, you can do it, okay? There's, there's unity when enough people around the world unite and they hold the green flame. And the green flame is the energy of harmony. It's also the energy of healing, okay? So we're bringing in the energy of healing and harmony. But the other thing about the green ray is it's linked into growth. So growth um, in terms of understanding, growth in terms of, okay, it's, it's okay to go out into this great universe and discover a bit more, but let's do it in steps that are actually achievable and that we, um, that, that, that aren't, that's not going to go over our head, okay? So that's what I'm feeling I want to say there. Okay, anything else to say? Let's just bring a couple of tarot cards in and then we're going to go to a few other subjects. God, I've already done 26 minutes. All right, let's try and speed up a bit. Otherwise, I'll never get this uploaded in time for the fifth. CERN, anything else that you can tell me, please, with regards to CERN starting up? Birds, the birds aren't going to like it, is what I'm hearing. So it's going to be interfering with the electromagnetic uh, frequencies. Um, but again, I heard the bird... But this is the card that's come up, which is the card of the star. It's got a bird flying in the sky. Again, our job as light workers is to be the temperate force, okay? To be the temperate force. Uh, what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is if we know it's going to interfere with the electromagnetic fields, we potentially might get a bit headachey, achy, whatever, however it manifests in your body. You're just going to feel a bit off potentially. Let's not call it in, but potentially this can happen. The birds are going to be feeling it too. The animals are going to be feeling it too. Well, what we do is we become that figure. We become the figure who's the water bearer, who's mastering the elements, who's able to send up good wishes into the universe, okay, that um, the universe can support us in our growth. We are a bit like, this is Metatron, he's saying we're a bit like kids in a, ca in a candy store. Who, uh, this is the analogy of CERN being turned back on, even if it's not your choice, this is what humanity has chosen going back into the candy store, grabbing everything that they can in the biggest pick and mix bag that you've ever seen, going back out, stuffing our face, stuffing our face with what comes back, stuffing our face with the, the images, the vibrations, whatever it is that's found, and then we'll gorge and we'll just feel sick because it wasn't good for us, okay? So what we need to be doing again is envisaging best case scenario, highest timelines that we can learn what we need to learn, but we do it in a more gradual way. That actually, I want to say almost as though we can imagine that there are, um, blocks is a very, hard, a very strong word to use, but there are passwords, is what Metatron's saying. It's as though the scientists will require passwords to go beyond a certain point. So that might bring them some frustration because they're just wanting to know it all straight away. You know, remember, it's, it's being fired up on the 9th numerologically. You know, it's like from naught to a thousand miles per hour and billion, however, however fast it goes, straight away, let's have all of it. And what I'm hearing is we need, as light workers, we need to set up a, a series of passwords, codes, um, and only the, the scientists who have the true understanding um, that are linked to their heart energy are able to get past that, to then uh, be able to allow the technology to go one step further. So what we need to be doing is imagining it as a gradual process. Like another analogy I'm being given is a series of tunnels. So it's like a series of tunnels that 
um, discovery needs to go through and they will be blocked in dead end tunnels at some places because humanity is not ready to go there. Um, but we have to be holding this energy. We have to have this wisdom to know that this is possible. Because I just know there's a huge other part of the community, as soon as you mention CERN, that are going to be going, oh my God, you know, and going into all of the negativity. That might very well be valid and true, but it's not going to help anybody. It's not going to help you. It's not going to help the earth. It's not going to help the universe. So, you know, because that's, that's, that, that's what the devil wants. That's, that's the darker energy. That's exactly what they want you to do. They want you to go into the negativity and the doomsday and it's like we're all going to be blown to smithereens. We're not, you know. That's, but that, that's where that leads, okay. So don't do that. Don't do that. Because that, lead, that leads to that, okay. We're not going to go there because we have another option we have another option and the other option is to stay aligned to stay in our heart oh that sounds too straightforward and too simple amanda well yeah because it is straightforward and simple sometimes but we don't want to hear that we want to feed the darkness we want to feed the baddies that are in control of technologies that they don't understand um but ultimately, there are good people within CERN. There are good people within the scientific community. There are good people who genuinely want the best for this world. And they are the ones that we wish to put in charge of this whole operation. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to leave it there. Anything else to say on CERN? Um... Yeah, I'm getting the same, uh, that was the, the Master Jesus spray that I used and he's taking me straight back to a vision that he keeps giving me over and over again because it's so damn relevant. Um, it's the one when there were some riots or something, I think it was in America, and um, I was shown Jesus just sitting in the middle of the riot and he wasn't doing anything, he was just sitting. He was just sitting and being still. And then because he was able to exude that energy of peace and tranquility and harmony, the other people that were all fighting suddenly noticed something was amiss. There was another frequency in town. And it was the energy of Christ. And it stopped them in their tracks and brought them back to their senses and brought them back to their hearts. That's what we're being asked to do. Okay. Right, I'm going to move on. Um, I want to pull some cards now on Japan. So let's move on to Japan. Um, let me just bring up the news regarding Japan and their heat wave. Um, okay, Japan. Oh, hold on a minute, guys, sorry got the wrong internet on and now I won't be able to edit this bit out sorry I haven't got time so please just be patient hold on a minute is it going to find my network no okay oh yeah there we go I think they've had temperatures above 40 degrees which is really unusual for them and it's really unusual for the time of year that they're in um, and it's pretty uns insufferable out, out there. So firstly, to my... Yeah, here we go. Living through Japan's hottest summer on record. Um, right. Let's just see what there is to say. What deck do I need for this? First thing is, I noticed in my astro diary today, uh, this is the Wee Moon diary, that there is a Japanese goddess of fire called, apologies for my terrible pronunciation here, Kamui Fuchi, okay? And there's an illustration here of her um, by Anna Lindbergh. Um, there, see that? It's just interesting that I opened my diary for this week and I wanted to talk about Japan. And I think this is the only reference to Japan I've got in this diary. 
and we've got the Japanese goddess of fire, Kamui Fuchi. So, um, that's interesting in itself. Let's pull a few cards for Japan and this heat wave. Let's see what wants to come through. What guidance is there for the Japanese people and the symbolism of this for our world? I know there are um, big heat waves as well in other parts of the world. Um, I was just shuffling actually the uh, Keepers of the Light deck for another Ascended Master. And we've got Lady Venus, Downloads and Understanding. So the elements are bringing downloads. Um, the heat is bringing in a download. What does that mean? What that basically means is that the elements through the energy of fire, water, air, etc., earth, are bringing in new downloads of frequency. But it's a bit like the energy of the tower. It's the tower card. So the tower card comes to take away an old pattern, an old way of being, an old way of thinking, and then something new has to come in its wake. Um, a new way of coping, maybe. Um, so it, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a download that you necessarily welcome with open arms, but it is a download all the same. It's a way that path, new patterns can come in and it's a bit like, OK, well, what is humanity going to do with that then? What, how are they going to respond to that? Now, the Japanese people, I've personally got a lot of time for the Japanese people. And I think that over the years, um, I've always been so impressed with the way that when they have natural disaster there, they come together and well, they just come together and are able to clean up, uh, help each other. I think they, I've said this before in previous videos, that we have much to learn from the Japanese, much to learn from the Japanese. Um, so it'd be interesting to see through this summer how they cope with this unusual weather event. Um, and I feel as though they will be a shining example to the rest of the world as to how you look after, for example, your neighbour, you know, um, how you care for others. Uh, let's have a Metatron card in, on Japan at the moment. Japan. Heatwave in Japan, Metatron. Yeah, it's the card of duality has come up. But what I was f being shown by Metatron as I shuffled the deck was, you know, when you get really hot and bothered, what usually happens, and it's human, is we can, oh, I certainly can be like this. You can get quite grumpy. Grumpy, bad tempered, hot headed. I feel as though... The Japanese people are going to show another way of coping with this heat. I feel, and it's not to say they're perfect, because of course they're not. No nation is. They have their issues like anybody else. Um, but it feels as though they have a more cool-minded. <laughs> they're better at basically holding this blue flame that Archangel Michael was talking about. Um, staying cool amidst a crisis of heat. Um, but it is very dualistic. Um, I feel as though they're going to show the world a way to behave and a way to cope with this heat. Now, without wanting to get into the whole environmental debate, the truth is that many places on our planet are getting warmer or certainly experiencing very hot temperatures also being drawn to India, drawn to parts of America. Um, Spain had a heat dome over it recently. Portugal did as well. Um, 
And there's something to do with, this is unfortunately going to be something that more countries start to experience, but I feel as though we can learn from the Japanese. The right way to do it or the wrong way to do it. Um, as I say, it doesn't mean they're perfect, but I, that is what I'm picking up because I've also got the card of communication. They are going to communicate to the world how you handle crises such as this because they've done it before. I remember being so bloody impressed after Fukushima, for example, and after some of the other quakes and things that have happened there, they've, you know, they've had their fair share of natural disasters and things that have happened. And they always just come together and, and also rebuild quickly. If the tower's going to come back down, they're going to rebuild quickly. Um, and also this thing about technology uh, coming out of Japan as well. Uh, Metatron. Japan, Japan. The way of the warrior. He showed me the way of the warrior. Um, yeah, and the way of the warrior links into a code. It's a code of conduct. It's a way that you behave. Even if you're hot and bothered, <laughs> and it's God knows how many degrees, and you haven't got your air conditioning, somehow you've still got to maintain that zen-like energy. And they're not all going to be able to do it, but some of them are. And I think it's going to become quite noticeable that some, how some countries behave when um, the temperatures soar. And I have to confess, sitting here in the UK, my fellow brethren in the UK can behave appallingly in the heat. I live by the sea, so I see it. People descend on our town and they behave appallingly in the hot weather. They abuse the environment. They abuse each other. It's just sometimes the worst of humanity. Not always. There's also some lovely people, of course. But I'm not, I think the UK could certainly learn from what I'm sensing here in terms of energy. Probably USA as well. Okay. Um, one other card for Japan. Then we're going to move on to another subject. Japan. I'm just being shown this reverence, you know, this reverence, um, this respect um, for Mother Earth, this respect for each other. As I say, not a perfect society, all sorts of problems there. But I'm pulling out the best bits that we can learn from. Um, we've got the energy of liberation. That's really interesting because what are the colours of the Japanese flag? Isn't it just red and uh, black and white? I mean, just Japan flag because... Uh, okay, it's just red and white, is it? Okay. Oh, why are the two flags in Japan? Because look at that. I'm just looking at that flag. That, that almost looks like a flag to me and it's the card of liberation which is to do with balance, fluidity, dissolution, non-resistance and freedom. It's the frequency of red, white and black. Um, so both the rising sun flag and Hinomaru were adopted in 1870 by the new Meiji government. Uh, okay. I'm probably putting my feet into a great big subject here in terms of the J Japanese flag because um, I don't know much about it. You'll have to help me out in the comments. There's something here about the, the flag. Um, let me just see what I can intuitively pick up because I'm feeling this is the flag of Japan. Uh, it's on fire. It's the first thing. This looks like lava. Um, this looks like um, Mother Earth moving. Obviously they are a a nation with frequent um, volatility in terms of, um, I'm feeling volcano, earthquake as well. Let me just, what's the Japanese volcano? Japanese volcano. Um, name of Japan's famous volcano. 
Oh, Fuji. Fuji, yeah. But is, it, is that a volcano? I'm not sure. I'm just going to put Japanese volcano eruption. Put news in. What's coming up? Oh, right. Okay, I am onto something here. Mount Fuji. Um, this was two weeks ago. The Japan Times. It says police get serious with preparations for possible Mount Fuji eruption. Um, the country's tallest peak. Uh, we need to make preparations for a potential complex disaster such as an eruption occurring after a massive earthquake. Okay, cancel, clear, delete. I don't want to be pulling anything in here, but it's just that this is, that is very much the energy of lava. I'm also feeling this is the energy of Japan, the colours white and red. And of course, lava is boiling hot, isn't it? It's hot. Volcanoes are hot. They're about, they want to erupt because of the inner heat. Japan is having this heat wave. I think there's something going on deep in the land there. Um, but ultimately, what it feels as though it brings in is the energy of liberation. How many times have you heard me say about this movement from east to west? Um, the land of the rising sun, um, that part of the world, not just Japan, of course, but New Zealand, um, Australia. But I'm reading on Japan here. There's something about, put it this way, I mean... No offence, but again, I love the Japanese people, but there's an impression, rightly or wrongly, of them being a bit like the Brits, to be honest, a bit buttoned up, okay, a bit buttoned up. It's like, uh, it's not like a Latino, you know, it's like just <laughs> very expressive and emotive and all the rest of it. Uh, they're, they have similarities with the Brits, quite buttoned up, um, but even more so, very modest, you know, um, not stepping out of line. I've had Japanese clients when I was in business year, decades ago, and I made faux pas without even realising I was making faux pas by, you know, giving my business card the wrong way and all this type of stuff because I didn't understand the etiquette and I had to learn. Um, but there's an energy of modesty and we do things a certain way. And in that land where all of that goes on, there is this bubbling energy underneath, which is just like wanting to break out, break out of the box, break out of the matrix, I want to say. But they're not just doing it for themselves, they're doing it for all of us. Because it's like, look at the whole world, everyone's wanting to break out to a degree. You know, a lot of people are, some people aren't, some people are very happy to stay in their little boxes. But there is a growing movement towards liberation and freedom. And let me have my freedom. Let me do things my way. Your way doesn't have to be my way and my way doesn't have to be your way. Let's be free. What the hell does that mean? So Mount Fuji feels as though it's going to be coming into play. Um, and I realise what I've said there is quite a big thing, but just watch watch Fuji. Uh, let's just pull a couple of cards on Mount Fuji herself. Let's see if she will say anything to us. Um, what cards do you want? <laughs> so I'm talking to, a, talking to a mountain here. Um, what cards do you want? You want those cards? Okay. We're, we're going to stay with Tarot. Okay. Mount Fuji. So that's just shot out of the deck, which is the Three of Wands. This is the mountain talking, Fuji. The Three of Wands, the card of vision, looking at the horizon, looking at the higher picture. Um, the Eagle. The King of Cups. That is the king. There is a king in Japan, is there? isn't there? Or is it a queen? Um... Uh, Jap Japanese king, Japanese king. Uh, okay. I'm not entirely sure to be honest, guys. But anyway, royalty, royalty. I've got royalty here. Uh, what else? This is the mountain talking. The mountain, Mount Fuji. Two more cards. Ace of Swords, a lot of bird activity again. I'll show you the cards in a minute. Page of Wands, 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 Page of
page of cups and the ten of the ten of uh, cups. Okay, happy family. That's Japan. The happy family, um, the content nation, sitting around with each other. I feel also as though the Japanese have got something to teach us about respecting elders. Um, the um, from my sociology days, I remember this. I did sociology A level. The nuclear family, it's called, isn't it? You know, the uh, the core family. It's like they looking after their elders. Looking after their elders. We can learn things from Japan. Um, there's truths to come out. There's truths to come out of Japan. There's a new way offered that comes out of Japan. Japan's one to watch. I'm going to come back to Japan in another video, guys, okay? Because uh, I feel as though I need to move on to a different subject at this point. But anyway, sending my love to my Japanese followers. Um, don't go into fear. Let's just see any other guy one card of guidance for them. Don't go into fear. This is all um, ultimately good for your country and good for the world. Um, Mother Nature doing her thing, releasing. You are well equipped to be able to deal with anything that's coming. And we've got the energy of healing again. A lot of healing. We had that before, didn't we? The card of uh, temperance for um, CERN, when we were talking about CERN. And now we've got the card of healing for Japan. And it says gentleness of love, realignment and transformation. So again, the Japanese people feel as though they help to model what does grace look like? The swan. The swan is about grace. What does grace look like? What does realignment look like? What does rebuilding look like? What does gentle transformation look like? OK, and there's two hands there, two hands to help. Not just one hand, not just about me helping myself. Two hands that come together to help. And in between the two hands is a, a flower of life. Okay, what can we create together? What can we create together? I feel as though they're going to be showing that. Okay. Right, uh, how am I doing for time? I'm nearly at an hour. I didn't want to make this too long. I did say I was going to pull some cards on Jill Biden. Now I'm thinking, oh, I don't know if I want to, but um, let's just have a bit of coffee and then I might get my mojo back for that. Um, yeah, it's important I probably do say something here. Okay. Um, hold on a minute, guys. This is too good. <laughs> if we all just paused before talking about contentious subjects, the world would be a much better place. I guarantee that people will see the name Jill Biden on this video. They won't have watched the 53 minutes that I've already done. They won't probably even listen to what I'm about to say. They'll just go straight on with whatever they want to say about her. We're never going to get anywhere that way, are we? We have to learn to listen to each other. To pause, to realign. To come back into the heart. I will pull a couple of cards on her, but I'm just going to tell you my experience this week with her energy. It was something in the news. Um, I'm also going to reference Novak as well, because his energy, Novak Djokovic, helped me get back into my heart. Those of you that follow me on Instagram know this. I put it up, I think. So, without getting into the whole jab or no or not jab again, we've had this discussion for what seems like years uh, on my channel and on other channels. And I know people are pretty sick of hearing about it, but we are going to have to go back and look at it at some point because uh, we'll have to look at, is there going to be another wave in the autumn? Because it looks like potentially that there might be another wave of control coming in. But anyway, um,
I saw um, in the paper uh, Jill Biden going into a um, vaccine center, I think it was a vaccine center in America, and um, she said something along the lines of, what a great day this was, what an extraordinary sense of relief it is that we now have these jabs available for our very youngest children. And um, I think in America, I'm going to only talking about America, um, I don't know whether it's actually got approval yet, but they were certainly talking about giving them to babies under the age of six months old. But I think she was particularly talking about children under the age of five. What a relief it was. I have very strong opinions on this, okay? And uh, I try and stay violet pill with it in terms of, okay, if you want to do it, I'm not going to chase you down the street and tell you you're wrong. Um, but equally, put it this way, if it was my child, I wouldn't be going, I wouldn't be doing it. Um, I just wouldn't. Uh, to a baby or to a child under five, unless that child needed it for some reason. But with the Omicron variant, which is what, what we're talking about, I, I just cannot comprehend it. Anyway, that's my stuff that I'm working through. Um, doesn't need to affect you. You don't even need to have an opinion on my opinion. But I was watching Jill and she was saying this stuff. And then she brought in the energy of these Sesame Street characters. Um, Elmo and whoever the other one was. I've never watched Sesame Street. I was a Muppets girl. Um, and it was along the lines of Elmo is telling you kids that you need to go and get this because on Sesame Street, this is what we do to keep ourselves all healthy. And I thought, oh my God, get me off this planet. Get me off this bloody planet. It made me so sad. It made me so angry. It made me so triggered. Um, and it was the same day that Novak um, won a match at Wimbledon. He's through to the quarterfinals next week. I'll be cheering him on. And he's been accepted into Wimbledon because there is no requirement for him to have had the jab. Um, welcomed with open arms. People are loving watching him play. And I thought, OK, if he can stay calm and he can stay graceful and he can stay in his heart with the prejudice that he's had against him, the judgment that he's had against him for his choice to not have it, so can you, Amanda. Even in the face of people like Jill Biden who are rubbing your face in it. Um, and it really helped me in that moment. Um, I don't approve of people like her doing that, but equally in a world which has diverse opinions, you're never going to be able to stop it. So it comes back to the energy of alignment. Um, now a few things happened after that because I tried to meditate on it, my reaction, my feelings around it all. And I was taken back to a teaching that I bought through about six eight months ago and it really helped me so I'm going to remind you of it <coughs> because my initial reaction on hearing the news of her was I wanted to go straight back into battle mode okay Carly Ma Archangel Michael battle mode right I need to write a post on it straight away I need to do this I need to do that I need to inform people very masculine energy I mean, I've done that before, I'm not saying there's anything wrong in it, but it's just that's what I was going to do. And then I thought, yeah, but is that the answer? No one's actually listening when, when you do that because everyone is a sovereign being, whether you like it or not, they are. Everyone has freedom of choice to do whatever they want to do with their own children. Everyone has access to the same information that is available to everybody else. If they choose not to read it, watch it, you, that, that's their call. Um, Children also choose their parents, remember, okay? So it was like, no, hold back, hold back. And the piece of guidance that I was reminded of was when I was writing the Christ Consciousness deck, I was struck by the energy of the disciples because 
they feature in some of the cards. We've covered uh, Judas, um, Thomas, um, Peter. Can't remember the others, but anyway, certainly Thomas and Peter are in the deck. Uh, Joseph, father of Jesus, of course, Mary Magdalene. And they seem to exemplify a more humble, um, softer, gentler approach um, versus maybe some of the other ascended masters, which are more, I would call the warriors. And I was shown two circles, um, an outer circle and an inner circle. And the outer circle was made up of the warrior energies of which we are part. OK, it's OK to be both. This is what I'm trying to say. It's OK to have both reactions. It's OK to respond in both ways, but don't get stuck in just one way. There's a time and a place for everything. It's quite complicated what I'm trying to say here. I hope people are following. The outer ring is made up of the warriors, the Archangel Michael, Kali Ma, Archangel Uriel, Archangel Metatron I've put on the outer ring as well. You know, Michael has a sword. Kali Ma has various swords, um, etc. They are energies you don't want to mess with, okay? There's a time and a place for going in with that warrior type energy. But it's a bit like battle mode sometimes. And to stay in battle mode can be very tiring. It can be very wearing. And sometimes you can be fighting a losing battle because as I say, we're on a planet of free will anyway. So you've got your outer ring. You are the outer ring as well. And then there's the inner ring. And the inner ring is the disciple energy, okay? And this is just an example. There will be others that could be included in this, but the likes of Jesus' disciples, who were very humble, everyday men and women, okay? They didn't have a sword in their hand. They didn't have a gun in their hand. They had a fish in their hand, probably, if anything, okay? <laughs> or a loaf of bread, okay? They just came from their heart, they were barefoot a lot of the time or just simple sandals. Um, it's interesting I'm mentioning that. Why am I mentioning that? It's because Archangel Sandalphon wants to come into that energy. Very soft, very gentle. It's a different approach. It's the energy of, let me just sit down and should we just talk? Do you want to talk? Um, and it helped me get out of the space of indignant rage which actually wasn't helping me it wasn't helping anybody else um because it's about balance it's balancing the two and i'm just using somebody like jill as an example there's plenty of other people that could trigger me around the world plenty of people that can trigger you i might be one of them you know and it's not about politics in terms of she's of the left so it's her that i'm triggered by there are people on the right that trigger the hell out of me as well okay <laughs> That's the truth. So it's what you do with those triggers. And I was just reminded that we have both of these templates within us. The warrior, that absolutely there's a time and a place to stand up and say something and fight for a cause and all the rest of it. Absolutely. But you can't stay fighting forever. Once you've said your piece, and if no one's listening, you've said your piece. Um... Let me pull a couple of cards on this. Metatron. What is there to say with regard to these two circles and the guidance for people watching in terms of triggering and how to approach these difficult subjects in our world, of which there are many. Everyone has different opinions. What do we do with it? And we've got the energy of the flower of life. Um, and so I want to go back to that other card that I showed you, which is the card of healing, which had the flower of life in the middle of the two swans, the energy of grace. OK, I'm getting an energy coming straight in from Metatron here. This is quite forceful, what he wants to say. He says he's saying, as human beings, do you have any appreciation of the grace that God shows you day in, day out, to be on a planet of free will, where God graces you with the opportunity to be different. God graces you with the opportunity to be good or bad. 
God graces you with the opportunity to do this, to do that. And then he stands back and he loves both parts, both parties, both people, both things, both energies. He loves all of it because God is creation. Um, he allows us and he gives us, he graces us this life. And so our triggers, the people that trigger us, are there for us to learn from. Can we go back into our heart? And that's why Novak just really touched me this week. Because when I was so triggered by Jill, and then I saw Novak's face and I thought, if he can do it, I bloody well can as well. Because will he have been triggered when he was in Australia? He's a human being. Yes, of course he will have been. He was driven out of the country because of his choice. Um, he stayed dignified. He stayed loving. He stayed respectful. He's never bad-mouthed anybody after that whole experience. He's never bad-mouthed the country, etc. And he won't because he's got the frequency. He's got that frequency. And that's what we're aspiring to. And that's what I do have. And that's what you have as well within you. The template is within you to be able to deal with this stuff. Because I just think we're coming back. We're, we're almost getting to the point now because I'm just preparing people because we are going to be coming back to another wave in the autumn. It's already starting up here in the UK. Another round of jabs. If you want to have them, fine. You're, we're on a planet of free will. We have to allow people to do what they want to do. But are we going to have a reaction to it? Yes, we may very well do. Then what do we do with that? What do we do with it? We have to somehow integrate and align back to our hearts and truly get into the energy that God is showing us of allowing us all to have this experience. Even the experience of the, the going back to CERN, you know, let's go back to the start of this video. He's allowing us that experience to actually meddle in things we don't even really even understand we're meddling in. I'm being shown now, it's almost like the energy of, you know, that mad professor on Back to the Future with the, the hair standing on end. And he's like, you know, you're putting a wire in here and you're putting a wire in there. And it's like, I'm wondering what's going to happen if I do this. And God's looking at this and he's thinking, God, what are they getting up to now? <laughs> But he's patient and he's loving and he's wise and he's allowing us to do that. Will he allow us to blow up the whole universe? No. Will he allow us to blow up the whole planet? No. But that doesn't mean that human beings can't make a right mess of it down here. And so we have to bring in the energy of healing. We have to create that. How loving and how good is God? And God lives that loves everybody. He loves Jill. He loves me. He loves Brian. <laughs> I'm not saying they're bad people. I'm just saying I got triggered by her this week. OK, I'm allowed to be triggered by her. But then you let it go. You let go of it. You learn from the trigger. OK, why were you triggered? Even if there's good reason. If you stay in a process, if you stay in an energy of being constantly triggered, it's not going to do you any good. Look at the cards. You have to let it go. You have to allow space for each other. You have to stay in your heart. You have to stay in your heart. We're only here for a, however many years we're here. We're not here for very long. The world will still be spinning long after you and I have left this planet. And there will still be, you know, people who are doing things that we don't agree with. So, do I want to pull a card on Jill Biden? Let's just do it, I suppose, as I've said I'm going to. Shall I get another deck, though, because I think I've... Oh, no, no, this is a complete deck. I haven't pulled any cards. Okay, let's just use the same cards. This is the After Tarot deck. She always looks very... Um, well dressed and turned out you see this is the thing when 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 there's somebody around you whether they're in your personal life or in the collective that you just aren't resonating with aren't vibing with 
try and see the bits that you do like. Try and see the bits that you think, actually, that, okay, I'll give you credit for that, okay? She, she always looks well presented to me. She always looks well dressed. And I'm being genuine there in my praise. I'm not being sarcastic or bitchy. I genuinely mean that. Right, Jill Biden's spirit, what is there to say? I'm being shown an ice rink. Uh, I'm being, sh um, it's like a, it's like I'm being shown a, um, a slippery surface. And it's like she's trying to maintain her balance on a slippery surface. We have the high priestess on the bottom of the deck. I've never said this before. Um, I've never said this before about the High Priestess card, and I think I'm right in saying it. Um, is it a pomegranate that's on the High Priestess card? It's either a pomegranate or it's a, it's a piece of fruit uh, that links to the pineal gland. It looks like the same shape as the pineal gland. And there's something about, uh, I'm being shown the water, the high, the, God knows why this is coming up with Jill Biden, but fluoride in the water uh, is what I'm being drawn to talk about here fluoride in the water and f when you have a lot of fluoride I think I'm correct in saying it decalcifies or it does something to the pineal gland um and it's linked into money there's a card of hoarding onto money here the four of um pentacles uh, I mean that's a very vivid card isn't it we've got the grim reaper there coming with the scythe and the person is hanging on to their money. I don't want to get too deep into this reading. Okay, with her. Let's just pull two more cards. Anything else to say on Jill? Because otherwise it's going to become a political video and everyone's just going to be talking about Biden. Which is fine, but we'll do it another time. Okay, we'll, I'm going to do a video on Biden and Trump and we'll do it another time. We've got the Knight of Pentacles. That's one of her sons. And got the five of cups i think that's is um is hunter her her child it makes sense if he is um is it is is she his mum let me just look up his mother uh oh god hold on a minute he was born on the 4th of february oh god's sake that's gone on to somebody else Oh, it's gone on to Finnegan Biden for some reason. His daughter, Hunter Biden's daughter. Uh, no. No, she isn't. His first wife. It's his first wife. Okay. I don't know why that's... Well, I don't know. Maybe she's just close to him or... I don't know what it, I don't know what a relationship is with him. To be honest, I don't really care. But um, ultimately, she is uh, concerned about the son, and it seems to be uh, linking into money. I'm going to leave it there because otherwise, we're just going to get it's all this whole video is going to get a wash with comments about Hunter Biden. Uh, let's not go there, guys. Let's do that another day, shall we? It's Sunday for God's sake. Right. Um, Anything else to say before I uh, move on? I'd better get this up uploading, actually. How are we doing for time? One hour, 13 minutes. All right. So thank you very much for people that have watched this far. Um, let's just see, how can I wrap this up? <laughs> what the hell am I going to call this video? Oh, I'm going to put the cards down. What a crazy old world, guys, at the moment, hey? What a crazy old world. What I will promise you is we will try and walk through it together and uh, we will try to always stay in our heart whatever subject we're covering. And I send you all my love. I really do. Um, let's just end with the gift of rose gold uh, because this has been winking at me all the way through this reading. Rose gold is the energy of the stellar gateway. It's the highest chakra. And there's been a lot in this video about alignment. So let's try and bring in the energy of alignment. Okay. Peaceful alignment. 
rose gold. Hmm. I'm being shown very literally rose gold. A rose and a piece of gold. And it's like when you combine the heart with the material world, that's when we truly start to um, live an abundant life. It's a lovely, lovely energy, that one, rose gold. So it seems to be about aligning to abundance, but aligning to abundance where everybody wins. Because I'm um, in the gym every other day at the moment, I've been, oh, we'll just, let's end this on a light note. I've been um, shaking up the music that I've been listening to. So I've always been a big Bruce Springsteen fan, big Bruce Springsteen, top five artist for me, Bruce Springsteen. And um, he's got a saying, hasn't he, Bruce, uh, which is something to do with um, if we every no one wins unless everyone wins, something like that. That's the energy that I'm really feeling. But anyway, the funny story about Bruce Springsteen is that, uh, you know, on your um, Spotify or whatever, or no, in fact, it's YouTube. I was listening to Bruce. I was doing Born to Run, all the rest of it, getting into the vibe of it sweating it out and um and then another song came on that I'd never heard of before and I thought bloody hell this is good it was a real rock track I'd never heard it before I'm just going to get the title up I loved it absolutely loved it anyway I couldn't find who it was and uh and then I, the next day I went back into the gym and it came on again on on my list and I looked up who it was, and this is really going to make you laugh, because you know I'm an electro-pop girl, really. It was ACDC, Thunderstruck. And <laughs> that song is just bloody brilliant. As is Soft Cell, Nighthawks. Both of them are quite edgy. I know it sounds a bit weird, but the, trust me, Soft Cell, Nighthawks, I mean, it's a bit... Um, if you're easily offended, don't listen to it because you'll be offended. But it's great. It's about the dark. It is about the darkness, sort of trying to get its hooks into you. But it's like it's like an anthem. It's but it's it's like it, it it's brilliant. I just love the vibe of it, and I love the vibe of this Thunderstruck by ACDC. And um, this is how funny spirit is because I thought ACDC. God, you you know Amanda, like, really. And then I thought, I wonder who's brought that to you, i.e. Heart Squad. Now you tell me, is there any, are there any Chris Cornell fans out there? Did Chris Cornell like ACDC? Or is there a link with ACDC and Chris Cornell? Because I think there is. I think it was Chris that brought that song to me. It's brilliant. And then, of course, I look up the meaning of ACDC. And, of course, it's to do with the alternating current. We're back to Tesla who when I am back in my room properly, I'm very much looking forward to channeling for you for the second time, which I've been promising for months, but you know, I just haven't had the space. But yeah, he's coming. Anyway, guys, I must go and get the uh, washing out of the machine now. <laughs> Lots of love, take care of yourself. I'll be back in um, a week or so, but I'll try and pop on if I can before then. But thank you for your patience. Thank you for your love. I hope you took something out of this video that's gone a bit all over the place today, but I enjoyed doing for you and I hope you enjoyed listening too. Much love, take care, stay in your heart. Bye for now, bye.